Hello world, welcome back to another Try Hack Me Challenge video. In this video, we're going to continue the Squid Game Room, but this time we're going to be doing Attacker 2. Let's get started. Uh oh, looks like you have got the next opponent, Attacker 2. Ready for the challenge? All right, so our first question is provide the streams, numbers that contain macros. We know from the previous attacker that Olay Dump will give us our stream information that we want. So let's go ahead and do Olay Dump on, actually we need to first navigate to our Maldox directory. Yes, okay. Then we'll use Olay Dump PY on attacker one dot dot. Sorry, attacker two dot dot. Okay, here's our new streams. And let's see, it's asking for streams that contain macros. So we know that macros are designated by an M out to the left here next to the stream number. So we have 12, 13, 14, and 16. So that will be our answer for the first question. All right, provide the size bytes of the compiled code for the second stream that contains a macro. So our second stream that contains a macro is stream 13. So we're going to look at the size here. That's this column. And so we're gonna get 15671. Answer is incorrect. Huh, that's weird. There must be some extra information we need to know. So a lot of times with these tools, there'll be like a, a flag for verbose output. And that may be what we need. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and delete our answer. And let's go ahead and come back into our terminal and run Olay Dump help. And let's go through here and see if we can't find anything that looks like a oftentimes it'll be designated by a, a V, like a TAC V or TAC capital V. Oh, right here, verbose output. Let's try that instead this time. So we're gonna go ahead and, and that just basically adds more output information. Oftentimes it adds like less significant output and that might be what we need because usually when you run the command normally, right, you get the, the main output, right? The main things that are significant that you would want to look at. But when you do TAC V, it'll give you extra information and that didn't change anything. Okay, so there must be something else that we can use instead. Let's let's look through here. Hey, here's something. Tack I print extra info for the selected item. Not sure why verbose wouldn't give us that information, but let's try that instead. Tack I never hurts to try, right? Okay, we got some new values here. We got 13867 plus 81804, and our answer format is five digits. So let's try 13867 instead. Ah, and that's our answer. So this full size here, right? Since a macros is um, an executable object, it has a compiled source code, right? It has compiled code in it, right? And so this number must represent the compiled code plus the non-compiled code, right? And then with our extra information that we got, it separates what's compiled from what's non-compiled, right? So 13867 plus 1804 would give us 15671, right? Okay, so not too bad, not too bad. Let's go ahead and clear for the next one. Provide the largest number of bytes found while analyzing the streams. Okay, shouldn't have cleared it, but that's fine. We'll just rerun our command. And we're just looking for the stream with the largest number of bytes. And we got 63641 and 63528. So it looks like stream five is going to be our answer. Oh, well, not stream five, but the size for stream five is gonna be our answer. So 63641, could have just copied and pasted it, but I didn't. All right, pretty easy so far, nothing too difficult. I'm sure it'll ramp up here soon. Find the command located in the fun field. Make sure to reverse the string. 
Okay. So, this probably requires us to go through each stream, you know, like we did before, and look for information that we need. But there's 18 streams, so going through them one by one is just not going to be effective, right? So here's what we want to do. We basically just want to write a little one-liner bash script, right? That'll basically loop through, because we know what command we're going to use, right? Well, we want to loop through each stream and print out the strings and then grep for the word fun, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So how we're going to start this off is we're going to say for I, in, and then you're gonna give a range, right? One, two, 18. It's gonna basically iterate 18 times, right? And then we want to put a semicolon, do, and then we're gonna say echo dollar sign i, and dollar sign i is our i variable, and that's how you do it. You designate it with a dollar sign next to it. And then, because we want to keep track of what index we're on, right? Because that index is what stream we're going to be running through, right? And then we want to, so what I'm about to do is called interpolated commands. And basically it just runs the command inside of basically a variable encapsulator and then grabs the output of that command. So we want oladump.py tag s dollar sign i again, right? Cause we want the stream number. And then we want capital S for, you know, string dump. And then of course our attacker two dot doc. And then we want to grep for the word fun. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, so let's finish this off here. Then we need to make sure to close out with a done. And let's see what that gives us. So if it finds a line with fun in it, it'll print it out. So stream 15 has a bunch of funs, but that's funk, right? So it grabbed part of it. It found our fun, but it was as a substring of other items, right? So, what else can we do then? If that didn't work, let's go to our help menu and see if there's any special something or another we can see here. Right off the bat, I see TAC V right here. TAC lowercase V, not uppercase, right? Because uppercase would be verbose output. VBA decompression. This argument will attempt to decompress any VBA in any of the streams containing macros. VBA is what macros are written in, and it uses data compression in various streams. We know that data compression alters the data. So before, when we were just searching through strings, we may have been searching through compressed data on various streams rather than our original data. And the streams I'm talking about are the ones with macros in them. So VBA, like I said, compresses the macros, kind of like a, a zip file compresses your data to make the file smaller, right? So. We need to decompress that data and maybe it'll have the plain text for us and maybe some of that plain text will be the output we need, right? So let's go ahead and instead of TAC capital S, right? We're gonna do TAC lowercase v and then we're gonna rerun it. Oh, we got a hit. Awesome. So it told us that we need to make sure to reverse the string so this is our command and we can see that it's reversing the command. So this is clearly for obfuscation, right? Yeah, we just wanna take this and the easiest way we can reverse it is just by doing echo, pasting the command, or not the command, sorry. Pasting our string and then piping it into rev, which is just a bash command that lets us reverse strings essentially, or files, whatever. So that's definitely our flag format. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And let's move on to the next one. Provide the first domain found in the maldoc. Okay, so now we're looking for domains. Let's clear our screen. So now we wanna look for a domain, right? And where are we gonna start? Well, we know domains are often associated with HTTP, so we could try looking for strings that have HTTP in them. I mean, it may not work, it may work, who knows? It's trial and error, right? So we can easily just use the same command that we're, well, not command, we can use the same script we did before since we already have it. And instead of grepping for fun, we can just grep for HTTP instead. See if we get anything. So that 
just tells us that the domains weren't listed out in the compressed VBA macros, right? So we can easily just switch it back to our strings, right? Our string dumps and search those as well. Oh, we've got some hits. We've got lots of hits. All right, let's scroll up. So there are domains in these Adobe files, but those are probably not what we're looking for. And it wants the first domain. So now stream nine does look like it's got some interesting domains here. This is probably what we want, right? These just look very suspicious. So let's go ahead and grab that. And then we're going to copy it. Paste it. And I don't think we need the HTTPS at the beginning. All right. Provide the second domain found in the maldoc. OK, that's going to be probably whatever the next one is. Yeah, this perfect demos one. Let's make sure not to copy the HTTP this time. And then let's see, copy. All right, we just knocked out two of them very quickly. Provide the name of the first malicious DLL it retrieves from the C2 server. Okay, so DLL files have the extension .dll. So what we, can we do? We can just search for DLL. So let's grab DLL. Ah, oh, we've already got a hit. It looks like it's the same output that we had before. If we had just kept analyzing the output we had before, we would have noticed it, right? But we didn't. That's okay. Well, I didn't. Sorry. So the first one is www1.dll. Oh, it's also down here. Type that in, www1.dll. Okay. How many DLLs does the maldoc retrieve from the domains? It looks like we have five, right? These are all numbered differently, one to five. So five is definitely our answer. Provide the path of where the malicious DLLs are getting dropped onto. So we can see that they're getting dropped into the C program data. So let's go ahead and just grab that as our answer. And there we go. All right. What program is it using to run DLLs? Well, that's easy. It's in the command strings that it's assigning to these OK variables, right? So. We just need run dll32.exe. All right. How many seconds does the function in the maldoc sleep for to fully execute the malicious DLLs? So looking at the output here, I don't see anything related to a sleep function, right? So what we need to do is we actually just need to look at the full stream, right? Because our little bash script up here only is going to print out matches for the grep pattern, right? Our DLL pattern. Luckily, we do know because of how we formatted our bash script to print out what stream contains the data. We know that stream nine contains all this DLL data. So all we need to do is go look at stream nine and see if it's got all the other information that we need, such as the sleep function. So let's go ahead and Clear our screen and let's do an ole dump tech dot py tech s9 for stream nine. We want the streams of attacker two dot doc. And here we go. Here we go. So looking through this, we see that there's a wscript.sleep function right here, right? Now we can easily just go to Google and look up wscript.sleep, right? Because the number that was in there was 15,000. So we need to know what the conversion is. So it's the delay in milliseconds. So we just need to move the decimal place over three spaces to the left, and we're going to get 15 seconds. Under what stream did the main malicious script use to retrieve DLLs from the C2 domains? Provide the name of the stream. Well, we know it's stream nine, right? So all we need to do is rerun our base olay dump command and look at stream nine. And there's our answer, macro slash form slash O. 
Pretty simple. All right, that one wasn't too bad. I would say that one was probably arguably easier than the first one, but that depends on how you go about doing it, right? We used automation to basically look through the streams for us to find the information we wanted, which made the process so much faster. A lot of people don't know, you know, don't know how to do that or wouldn't have even thought to do that, right? They would have just gone manually stream by stream. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel to show your support. Leave any feedback in the comment section down below and check out our Discord and Patreon links in the description box down below. This is Almond Milk. I'll see you when we do Attacker 3. Goodbye, world.